Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. I figured we'd start this one showing you Andre Cunha. I really am trying to show you the player profiles more in the episodes. Um, hopefully when I move over to six episodes a week, we'll have more time to do that because it'll be shorter, but still more detailed and stuff. But do let me know in the comments any players you want me to show you that I might forget to do. Drop this in the comments and I'll try to put that on a list so I know who to show in each episode and stuff. But yeah, Andre Cunha coming along quite nicely. The best, well, equal best right back at the club with Keradine Chow. But look at the depth we've got in this position. Mateus Olsen's there. We've got Mahmoud Al-Ash. Um, Fabian Moskutza, who will sadly be leaving the club this January, as we know. Even Ward Prowse and Yappy Klaassen can play there. Matthew Patton Kavanagh. We've got an eight strong depth of field so to speak in that right wing back position it's the left hand side where we've really struggled and Marinus and Rogers Jr are the only two uh, that are really competent in those positions so we've had a couple of games off camera uh, which we're going to show you now and then we've obviously got our two Champions League games today which are really make or break for our season third place seems to be pretty much in the bag but you never know what we can do about getting that second spot now since that home defeat to Inter we've actually gone on a really good unbeaten run and winning a lot of games in a row now a 3-0 win at home to Midgetland who lately really seem to have fallen by the way side when we actually play them. I always used to be scared of them, but we seem to have the better of them quite a lot lately. Two goals for Sani Akinola and one for Fagner, giving us a very, very comfortable 3-0 victory in front of 5,500 people. Our home attendances are climbing by like an extra 1,000, 1,000 every single season. It won't be long, I hope, until we're actually selling out league games at home, which would be incredible. Now, this was a strange old game. We dominated the early stages in this game. Mark Yakim gave us the lead, as you do. But then immediately, with their first two shots of the game, they hadn't done anything until that point, Christian Jensen and Daniel Skipstead put Esbjö in the lead. And I was terrified that we were going to end up losing one of these muggy games where you they do nothing. Um, but they scored two goals, to be fair. But look at the number of chances we had. It's incredible that we didn't win this game by more. It took until the 81st minute, and Mariano Bravo pulled one out the bag before Amen Zayem scored an absolute I think it was a volley from Zayem to give us the win after 85 minutes. A really hard-fought win. Great, though, as it's another three points in the league. And that brings us on to 41 points so far. 13 wins out of 16. FC Copenhagen and Orborg are the two sort of chasing pack. We're seven above Copenhagen and an eight above Orborg. The league is looking very, very safe. And our league team, with Mark Yakim leading the line with his eight goals in the league, really are doing a brilliant job of holding down the fort uh, whilst our stronger side takes on the Champions League games, basically. Randers and ha uh, Horsens have actually picked up a few wins over this little period as well, it would seem, catching up with the pack a little bit too. So the board have let me upgrade the youth facilities again for £650,000 and the training facilities for £750,000. I'm only really able to do that once a year, but we really do need to improve those because they're still well below average uh, for this division. It was the one area I couldn't improve earlier. So every single season, basically, I'm going to be dumping a couple of million into improving our facilities because I think that's super important. And since you know how much we like affiliate clubs, the board let me have another one. I just keep asking and they just keep saying yes. Um, this time we've got Dinamo Bucharest over in Romania. So we've now got one in Germany, Romania, Denmark, Australia. Ooh, lovely. Uh, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. So plenty of links to plenty of clubs, which will help with scouting and also picking up players from these clubs. As I think I'm actually interested in a player from Berno, and we're going to be able to get him uh, no matter what, which is going to be nice. Our main man, Jonas Svenningsen, also managed to score two goals and get an assist uh, for Denmark. So he's got 10 appearances for Denmark at the age of 20 now he is 20 finally 20 years old and three goals not the best record but I think that will improve with time I also sold Hill Tavares uh, to Varnamo for 70,000 pounds he was complaining that I left about the Champions League squad he was not happy but we just didn't have room for him anymore so to make a profit on the guy I thought was a pretty do good deal we got a 50% clause as well I think now I might have to cut this out for time hopefully I won't but if not you'll see these guys in January anyway but I've been quite busy in the old transfers just sort of slowly trying to pick up little players here and there that I think might be quite decent for us in the long run now obviously you know about Kifuentes and Ibrahim San, but these ones are just ones that I've been spotting and picking up over the past couple of episodes worth of games, basically. So I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of them now. So there's Lucas Pavek, who is the guy we're getting from Berno. Um, I don't know how much we paid for him. I couldn't actually remember, but it's not a huge amount. He's a decent enough little striker, 18 years old, a solid player that will just slip nicely into the squad and give us a little bit more depth. And for this kind of price, we could even loan him out and get him some football, increase the Danish quality. That's what I'm trying to do for these little signings that don't cost us too much. Consistency, professional, all the good stuff. Now, this is the one I'm most excited about in this little group of strikers. Uh, this is Rayan Alal El Hazazi incredible name uh firstly but the most important thing about him for a fact is the fact that we got him for 475,000 pounds he's dutch which is kind of cool but also and this is the key thing he was wanted by psg and bayern munich on his wanted thing and some for some reason i think i offered him a little bit more money perhaps but not much he's only on about a grand a week he has agreed to join us instead of them and my scouts seem to rate this guy very very highly so i was determined to give this one a go purely because of my scouts recommendations and the other clubs that were interested in him also got alden halilovic for 275k just another sort of sensible midfielder professional personality uh not on a huge amount of money but he had a good amount of potential my 
scouts seem to really like this guy with the 85 there. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's get him as well. Why not? Then for £825,000, Ivan Jovanic. Yes, I know it's another wingback kind of position, but he's got that 13 crossing, 9 dribbling. He's a resolute personality. Not the best on consistency, I appreciate, but it's not like the worst. He's only a little bit. Uh, and the injury prone, ugh. Sometimes if they're really good and look quality, then I'll sometimes overlook that. And I think we've got him for a decent price anyway. And he's got fantastic physical abilities for a 19-year-old. So I was like, yeah, let's get him in too. And finally, Alisson Estevez is an attacking midfielder kind of player. Uh, I can't remember, about £300,000 for him as well. Not amazing, but just sort of picking up these players to help us in certain ways. I also found a player with model citizen personality. And he wasn't bad either, but he just wanted a little bit too much money for my blood. Um, So I, I might go back in for him, not sure yet. Now, very importantly, Inter won 2-0 away at Lyon, which means that that is definitely second spot, uh, third place in the group wrapped up for us. Not that it wasn't already but I think that basically completely confirms it now. Um, but it also puts us in a weird position with Inter, as you'll see, um, in that Atletico are basically the only club we can conceivably overtake now. A win here, if we were to beat Atletico, um, we go on to nine points, and we would then have to go and win in Italy, and we could technically get above it. It's going to be crazy difficult for us to qualify, is what I'm saying, and I don't think we will, but third place will be just fine for the Europa League run. So, ooh, yeah, standard kind of system. Um, I'm not going to go on counter today. I want to go out there and attack these guys. I feel at home we can probably get away with not being on counter. Um, so we're going to mark the crap out of Saul. Uh, Gidesh and Estrada are going to get sort of tackled a bit much. And, of course, Rodrigues up front. So that's how we're going to have to go. Now, Jankowski is back, but he's not fully match fit yet. And I'd be tempted to not play him today. Um, and instead play Sergio Santos in that slightly deeper role. Gives am a little bit of a, a rest. Still not sure. Like, Marinus, I like him, but I'm actually tempted to go with Rogers Jr. today. Looking at the performances, how have they done together? Wow, look at that. Rogers Jr., despite being a worse player, probably, in a lot of the stats areas, he's really doing a good job of showing me why maybe he should be in the squad instead of Marinus, frankly, um, playing like that. I know he's played league games compared to Marinus, but let's give him a try today. We can always bring Marinus on at half time. So on the bench, Niang, Marinus, Jankowski, Yakim, Al Ash, uh, Shishi, and Fagner. Al Ash is getting himself a few appearances there. I don't know why. Is it because Shawi is not available? Yeah, Shawi's not quite back from full fitness, so Al Ash is getting himself a few appearances. He may leave alone in January, though. Right. Let's just do this. I, I hope we can come up with something here. I really, really do. A couple of things to note about their team at the moment is they don't look particularly fit in certain areas. They're certainly a bit knackered. And this Radunovic guy looks like he could do with being tackled harder because he's already on a slight knock. Let's make that worse. So, question of the day, and today's question is this. Do you, on any of your saves, have a bogey team? One that you just hate coming up against? Um, yeah. On this one, I really do think we have a bogey team, and that bogey team is Silkeborg. I know we've beaten them probably a lot more times than we've lost to them or drawn, but every time we play against them, they make us incredibly difficult for us to actually go and beat them, uh, and we really do struggle a lot of the time. So yeah, definitely Silkeborg on this save, that's for sure. Robles, Akinola, uh, we've started really strongly here. Svenningsen, or Black with the big save, 64% possession in this game so far. If it carries on like this, I might even be tempted to move an extra player into midfield, because um, when we've got a lot of possession in games, that's what we do. Svenningsen's through, takes a touch. He, oh, what a save from Jan Oblak. We needed to be in front here. Rogers Jr. Can he look behind? Goes over the top of Bravo. He's got the pace. Svenningsen's in the box, but can he find the cross? Ball in. Svenningsen! Oh my god, he's hit the crossbar now. How are we not in front in this game? This is going to be one of those nights again, isn't it? Cunha. Great touch from him. Oh, not quite. Saul gets to it. I'm honestly amazed that we're not in front in this match. We've created, we only had three shots and they've all been excellent chances to take the lead in this game. Atletico have offered nothing, which means they will inevitably take the lead, no doubt. Santos, Svenningsen, and it's 1-0. Jonas Svenningsen with the goal. That is, what a start to the damn game. This is incredible. Jonas Svenningsen stepping up in Europe yet again. When you need him, he is there. And this would put us onto 10 points and, no, wait, sorry. Uh, no, it puts us onto nine points, level with Atletico. We'd need one hell of a result to overturn the... 4-1 defeat that we had to them in Madrid, though. That, that's the only problem with this, is that we are so far behind them in that. We're going to have to do something incredible. Akinola. And, ooh, okay. The possession isn't quite there for us now, uh, which is annoying. Bravo. Akinola. Svenningsen. Oh, round the post again. I, I just don't think we've got a 4-1 win in us, to be honest. Uh, I think we have a win on the night in us, that's for sure. The way we're playing at the moment is incredible. Cunha. Ah. Svenningsen. Oh, my God, a mistake from Cunha. Svenningsen has to score again. Oh, my goodness me. How are we missing these chances? Uh, you just feel like this is going to come back to bite us in this game. Rogers Jr., bravo again. He's got Svenningsen in the box. Can he find him? He has to. Svenningsen, and it's all black with the big side. That's a tough chance, to be fair. But Rogers Jr. is actually one of the lowest performing players on the night, which is interesting. Maybe Marinus later in the game. Svenningsen's in behind again. He's gone round the goalkeeper, and it's 2-0 in the first half. Jonas Svenningsen. I don't want to touch this system. This system is working an absolute treat right now. Um, if we could win this game 3-0... 
that would be enough, I think, to overturn the deficit on them and actually give us a real chance that then they have Leon in their final game. This is going to get crazy tense. Svenningson actually goes round the goalie. This is brilliant from him today. What a performance from him. 2-0 to B67. We just need to keep this going, lads. What an unbelievable first half. Vastly the better side. Possibly should have had more than two goals. One more goal is all we need, I think. Um, this is going to be bloody great. I can just feel this is going to be tense as hell. If we beat them 3-0, that final game against Inter is going to be huge. I'm not going to change a single thing because we played so exceptionally well in that first half. I'm going to tell them to push forward, but we, we were absolutely unplayable in that first half. And long may it continue into the second. We just need one more goal and th they're going to change something. You have to feel that they'll change something. Right, 60 minutes on the clock. Rogers Jr. still not having the best day. We're going to get Ashley Marinus on for him. Anyone else? Surgor's not been fantastic either. But then who would you get in for Surgord? Do we try it? Do we get Juan the Man Shishi in? Put him, let him dictate, since he is the dictator. Um, that's all I want to do for now. We're going to stick with the system we've got for now. If we're still not 3-0 up, by the time we get to eight, 78 minutes, then I'll switch it to the more attacking, um, you know what I mean, the one with the extra player in midfield, because I really do want to try and go for this. I feel like this game is there for the taking. We've had the chances to make this game 3-0 already. We need one more goal. Here we go. Santos's ball. It's a penalty! Oh, God. Rob Les has handled the ball. Svenningson... Oh, God. Bravo is on the pitch and Svenny's going to take this. He doesn't have the best penalty record, but he is on a hat-trick. Can he step up and do it? Svenningson! Oh, no! He's missed the penalty that could have given us... Ah, oh, I should have changed the taker. But I just figured he had enough about him. That's a great save from Oblak. What a chance this game has been for us. We we should be more goals in front. Uh, I might even do it now. I'm tempted to switch it up now and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I'm not even sure what to suggest at this point. We're just going to try and... We've got 15 minutes. We've played amazingly well on the night. One more goal, which we've, we could have had through that spending some penalty or any of his other chances in this game, would be enough to, I think, finish above Atletico potentially um if things go to plan the win is still important though because it gives us a chance going into the final game against inter that, that's kind of what we really need right now uh, i think it was going to be tough anywhere to finish above atleti purely because oh god oh purely because they've got leon on the final day and it would take a mammoth effort uh from leon to get anything from that match rojas animal oh saved if anything the pressure's coming back the other way now but then i suppose with that extra man in midfield um it was always going to be tough angel santos Although it does give us that extra man in midfield. Which we need to take advantage of. Marinus. Oh, good lord. Right, win it. Lever. Not great, but Svenningson's picked it up. He's got Cunha into the space. It's a terrible first touch from Cunha. Oblak looking long. This needs to be won by Christian Lever. Has to be won. What on earth was that? Jose Rodriguez. What on earth was that? Uh, it's coming down for him. For he can see this the entire way. And then he just sort of... What on earth was that? Well, that's us done. Not on the night. Uh, although I am tempted to maybe turn it off of this now. Just go back to what we're doing so we don't end up fucking it up entirely. Um, go back to what we were doing. I, I don't regret trying to go for it, though. One more goal and we could have had it. I I'm just so disappointed that they've managed to score that goal in the way that they have as well. Very, very frustrating. Um, don't you dare let them get another one. Oh, God, man. Who was tracking the runner? That was Andre Cunha's man, and now it's two all, and it's 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 going out the window here. This is what happens when you don't take your chances. Uh, I don't know if it even switched back to the other system yet. I don't know who in the hell is supposed to be tracking Alonso. He's completely unmarked, and we've just got tired towards the end. Oh God, it was all going. So it, we were this close to basically possibly putting them out, not putting them out. You know what I mean? Um, Bravo. We oh God, Bravo's through. And now he's missed another chance. How are we not winning this game? We, we should have been out of sight. And they've scored two in two minutes. And bang. It's it's not all over. Um, we still have the Inter to worry. Well, actually, we, we don't, do we? Because we had to win this match. Oh, for goodness sake. Ah, that's football for you, isn't it? That happens. Uh, terrible defending from Cunha to not even be in a position to try and block that. I don't know where he was. I think he lost the ball at the start of the play and didn't follow the tracking back. I don't know. Still, I feel like we've been massively mugged off there. We still deserve the win on the night and didn't get it. But you've got to take your chances. We had so many chances to put this game to bed. Like, endless opportunities. Svenningson had so many chances. 85 minutes and 87 minutes and Atletico have mugged us off. They had some good chances, to be fair. But we still should have won this game by a country mile. Svenningson, if he'd have just scored that penalty, I think this would have been 
Ah, you can't say anything more about it, unfortunately. So we had a couple of games off camera in the league. The first was away at Randers, who played a very narrow system that I kind of figured we'd be able to sweep the floor with them, but they were actually, they, they weren't great. They mostly shot from range and they had plenty of them. Uh, but a Mark Yakim goal in the 31th, 31th minute uh, gave us the lead. They had two big injuries, one to Budimir and one to Henrik Kortsen, the guy that came on to replace Budimir. Uh, so that might have neutered them somewhat. We got the 1-0 win and that's the main thing. Next up was a crucial matchup in the league against FC Copenhagen, particularly as they'd lost their last game 2-0 at home to Norgeland, which meant the win here would give us a 13 point lead over them not top of the not over second because that's now Orborg by a comfortable margin at the moment um but we did get the win through Sergio Santos a very good performance we played the frozen hug of death because they only had one striker and I think we deserve the win in the end we possibly could have had a few more Yakin missed a couple of chances but Santos's goal gives us the win and frankly you could basically call us champions already we're 13 points clear of them and 10 points clear of second place Orborg, who you feel like might fall away a little bit, although they have done a really good job this year. Now, in other news, Alvaro Carrasco, the young Chilean international that we've been after for a while that wouldn't talk to us, I tried something else out, and that is getting the um, director of football or chairman to handle contract negotiations for me. And it seems to actually get us past the point of him not talking to us. Now he's turning down the contracts because my chairman won't offer enough wages, but I've, I'm going to try again uh, by moving some more wage budget over because we've got a, great, a deal agreed. And if we we could get someone like Carrasco, then I tell you what, next year we could have a real team, because he's actually listed as a wonder kid on his profile page. So if we could sign someone like that, I would be over the moon. Um, but it remains to be seen if that's going to be possible. But we're going to keep trying to try and do little things to get that deal over the line, because that is so important to us. Now, here's the things at the moment are shaping up. It doesn't really matter, but I do want to try and go here and win and get revenge for that poor result that we got uh, in the home game. In hindsight, Maybe there was a mistake changing to that other system against Atletico. Just win the game on the night and then go against Inter and try and get that one because it was going to be difficult for us to overthrow Atletico anyway because they get to play against Leon in their final game and the chances are they'd probably win that. Um, so maybe this was the one we should have targeted. But hey, you learn some things. We've still done quite well in a group that I thought we would probably struggle to do anything in. Uh, so third place is looking good for us. So they're playing a 4-4-2 with Chris Morgan. Who is this Chris Morgan guy? I want to see this quickly while we've got a chance. Chris Morgan is an American. Okay. Don't tell me you play for us at some point. No, <laughs> if he's an American, chances are he might have played for us. What about that? So there's an American striker um, up front for Inter Milan. That's pretty damn dope. Who did he play for then? San Jose. Um, what the hell? December. Ooh, okay, I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, then he went to Middlesbrough for a bit. Played a few games in the Championship with Middlesbrough, then a few in the Premier League, and then had one hell of a season in the... Holy shit. He signed, from... he signed for Inter Milan for £17 million from a championship side. That's mental. Fair play to the lad, though. Definitely not playing that system, though. We're going to go with this one. And we are going to go out there and try and see what we can do. Uh, first string. Yep. Marinus, unfortunately, picked up a knock right after the game um, against Atletico. So he won't be playing today. Rogers Jr. I might actually start Jankowski for this one. I feel like he's in a position to come back and do a job for us. He's a bloody good player. And we really do need him in that midfield, I think. So, Amoa, Angel, Simovic, Leva, Cunha, uh, Rogers Jr., Jankowski, Sorgord, Akinola, Svenningson, and Bravo, who's... You know, he's had a decent season. He's got 10 goals, Svenny with 13. He's certainly contributing as much as he can, which is nice. But if Carrasco did come in, I wouldn't be opposed to... I wouldn't be... I'd be open to offers for Bravo uh, if Carrasco is going to be that good because he'd take his spot and I wouldn't want a player like Bravo um, to be playing in our B team, frankly. I feel like we could get the money and keep the B team what it is. We don't need it to be any better than it currently is when the money's there. Apparently, Inter have lost four of their last five games. So that's interesting, to say the least. Um... Hopefully we can pile on the misery. I I'm not sure. I, I really do not know what's going to go on in this game at all. We're just going to try our best and hopefully come out here with something special. Um, I think the team kind of owe me something special, basically, based on the way that we've played for a lot of this group. We've actually been very, very good. And on another day, I think if those games were all played again, there's a very good chance that we could have maybe taken a draw uh, with Atleti or maybe... Oh, lost more narrowly and beaten Inter at home, potentially, and possibly beaten it... You know, Ifs and buts for candy and nuts and all that stuff. We've got to deal with what we've got at the moment. And what we've got at the moment is a chance to at least go away to Italy here and pick up something. We don't win a lot of away games in Europe, so it'd be nice to go to somewhere big and turn them over. Um, I think the biggest scalp... Well, we didn't win any away games in Europe last year, did we? I don't think. Bravo. Oh, no, we might be in Fiorentina. Svenningsen round the post. So we could do with a big win. So far, I'd say we've probably just shaded this game. Although, yeah, actually, no, I think we have. That We've had... Actually, it's been very, very even in terms of mostly just long-range shots. Um... We've had more possession. That's about it, really. Both teams are sort of just feeling each other out at this point. Morgan. Oh. When will it end? When will we not have to concede goals like that? They've had four long shots and they've managed to finally score one already. 
Chris Morgan this time with the goal. He looks like a proper talented footballer. That's what I would say. Wendell's ball here. And Cham, I just thought, ah, no problems here. Morgan, he's got plenty of players in the way. It's an unbelievable strike from Chris Morgan. But uh, it's just not with us in this group, is it? It just isn't with us. Up for Svenningson. He'll struggle to win that, I would have thought. That's a good ball, though. Bravo's in. Oh, he's taking a poor first touch. And he scored it anyway. Mariano, bravo. My, bravo, my boy. That is one hell of a finish from Mariano, bravo. I thought he'd fluffed it. His first touch was absolutely terrible. Uh, great ball through from Jankowski. I think that's the difference. Having someone like Jankowski in the team over perhaps as I am. Just picking out those passes. Terrible first touch from Bravo. Gets himself in all sorts of knots and just drills it in the bottom corner. One all here at the Stadio Giuseppe Miazza, is it? Yeah, one all. Lovely old job. Well, half time and the game is dead even, but I think we've created the better opportunities in this match. And again, a bit unlucky, but that's how it is. Um, Bravo and Morgan are basically battling it out here. Now, Cunha's not had a good first half, so I might put him back to support because usually if they're not playing well, I flip them from attacking to support depending on which one they're already on. Ah, oh, it's mistakes from Cunha. Okay, maybe we could just try Chowie. You know what? I'm thinking Chowie. Akinola's not been excellent either. Maybe get some of the mistake makers out the team and... Yeah, get Chowi and Santos in. Santos played well against FC Copenhagen. Let's give him a try out here. Uh, Rain Adelaide is on as well. I'm tempted to go to counter now because we're starting to lose a bit of the possession too. And maybe just switching it over to counter. Oh, actually, um, maybe we could... I think it might have been because I put it on the look for the overlap. It might have encouraged them onto us a little bit more. Um, we'll turn it off of that as well because that seemed to work better in the first half when we weren't doing that getting us pulled out of shape too much perhaps just the theory to try and win some of this ball back again because inter have been vastly better than us in the second half and i wouldn't be too complaining if they went and scored a winner now because they have played well enough in the second half to deserve that basically ah oh, could look over the top you might still no oh we lost the ball oh hang on how has that gone from the I don't understand how that's even happened. That went from us having three players goal side to suddenly them scoring. What on earth just happened? They deserve the goal. They've been the better side in the second half. But what the hell happened here? So the ball comes down. It's one off of him. And how is... Okay. It's a great goal from Velasco. But I don't know what the hell happened. I... Uh, there you go. 2-1 to Inter Milan. It's not been a good group for us, unfortunately. Uh, they've deserved the win on the night based on their second half performance, but some of the goals we're conceding are very strange. Simovic, Jankowski. Go on, let's go and get the equaliser. Let's push this to attacking for the finished part of the game. It really doesn't matter anymore. It's weird that Leon should choose of all days today to actually go and get their first point in the group at all. Um, it could have... I mean, I don't know if it would have made much difference anyway had we got that win against Atletico because we would have still had to come here and win, I think. Um... Or would it have been a draw? I don't know. It doesn't matter because it didn't happen anyway. Um, so there you go. We are out of the Champions League. We were out of the Champions League anyway. We're still coming third. We're going to get to play in the Europa League after Christmas. So we're going to ch get a chance to win some home games, I feel. If we can keep the home record and actually just tighten it up a little bit, I think we can go far in that division. Division? League. You know what I mean. Now, of course, I don't know when the draw for the Europa League round is. It's usually a few weeks from now, but we've got all kinds of stuff in between. So in the next episode, it will be our first tie uh, in the Europa League knockout stages. I do not know who it's going to be against, and I do not know when it's going to be, um, but that will be the episode you're going to see. So obviously the Lingby game is off camera, and there might be a couple at the start of the second half of the season as well. So we'll have a, load of, a load of new young players as well coming in in that period. A lot of them will probably go out on loan, but hopefully we might be able to get Alvaro Carrasco. I really hope we can get that deal over the line and get him in it's just the way just i'm gonna try my best to get that deal done because i really want him at the club anyway if you have enjoyed the episode despite the little bit iffy uh in our champions league form yet again uh then do drop a like on the video that'd be dope and if you're new to the channel drop that subscribe drop well you can't press it it's the big red thing um for more videos every single tuesday thursday and sunday and i'll join you guys in the next episode for some europa league goodness it's nice to be back in a league where we might actually have a chance of winning something uh for now we're coming next year champions league watch out i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching Bye bye